Uh, my name is Frank Green. I will be playing the character of Roy. I am from Washington, D.C. Stayed there till about 96, and then I left and went to college up at West Virginia Wesleyan. You know, growing up in D.C., uh, I'm a fairly chill kind of guy, uh, you know, and sometimes you people kind of want to take advantage of that. And uh, <laughs> uh, I was actually in the ninth grade, and we were playing basketball out on the out in the playground, and uh, I spiked this kid's shot. I blocked this kid's shot, Koski, and he didn't like that too much. And so he threw the basketball at my head, and I got a big old fight, and got suspended right before my birthday. Uh, around that time, my sister was part of this acting troupe called Uprising. And it was a bunch of kids, mainly from uh, Maryland. And it was run by a couple, and it was their sons and a bunch of their friends' kids. And basically what they did was through uh, theater and music, they told the history of African Americans from the diaspora all the way up to the present, which at that point was about 92, 93. Uh, and my sister was a part of that. And, you know, I got in some trouble and obviously for fighting. And uh, they sent me to one of her rehearsals and I loved it. Uh, I was just hooked at that point. Uh, the way I felt watching someone else just completely release themselves into uh, another person's life, uh, I wanted to do that. And I wanted to make other people feel that. And in a lot of ways, I really credit it for saving my life. I didn't want to feel like uh, I had to fight all the time. They really helped foster and, and, uh, and nurture my love for theater. I was like, this is what I was put on this earth to do, and maybe I'm meant to save some other kid's life. If it's nothing more, then they get in trouble and they have to come and watch a show because their moms don't trust them to leave them at home. I got the scholarship and I went up to West Virginia Wesleyan, and I was a little nervous about being around a lot of white people, you know what I mean? Like that, and growing up in DC, uh, there was Mr. Augustinelli, who was my chess coach in high school. Uh, uh, one other white teacher that taught at the high school. Uh, but other than that, I really didn't have that much experience with white people. And so they were holding auditions, and I can't remember the name of the show right now, Long Something. Uh, it was a little jailhouse piece. And uh, I read for it, and people enjoyed it, and I pretty much, lost my scholarship because I spent all my time doing shows with the theater there. At one point I thought I wanted to be a pediatrician and I realized uh, I don't like kids that much in that capacity, you know? Uh, Barter Theater is the state theater of Virginia. Uh, it is right now the second oldest continually operating theater in the United States. It's been going since 1933. Uh, this guy, uh, Rob Porterfield is his name. He was an actor. Uh, he was from that area, but he was working in New York. And during the Great Depression, um, obviously wasn't really money for acting. And he went back down to Abingdon. And Barter Theater, what it was is, um, instead of paying money, because who had money, uh, you bring in a bushel of collard greens and you come see the show. You bring in some rattlesnake meat. Whatever you had to exchange for that ticket price is what it was that you paid for the ticket. But they would pay some of the playwrights and some of the actors, and there's stories of actors that like put on 50 pounds because that was their pay, was the meals from the community. What they do is they have two companies there. They have a resident acting company, and then they have what's called the Barter Players, which is the non-union acting company, which mainly does theater for young audiences and it's work man it, it's 15 month it's a 15 month contract which you don't find a lot in theater we were building the sets we were making our own costumes uh rehearsing the player shows at the same time maybe doing a main stage show barter is where i really feel like i got my education on theater and how to approach the craft i mean we're in southwest virginia it's a town of maybe 30,000. And that theater has been going for 75 years. Uh, it's a really beautiful thing. To, it was a beautiful thing to be a part of. I actually met Amelia at Barter. Uh, she came in, I want to say 2005, uh, as a Barter player as well. And we had done a few shows together. And I could tell she's a good person, good spirit. And, and so I really grew to trust her as a person, as an actor. And I think it was about 2007, and it was the end of the contract. She was leaving, 
and we're all sitting out on the hood of one of the on the you know trunk of one of the company cars and we're talking about theater and you know because they all at barter they put you in stuff you're not supposed to be in roles you would never get cast in they put you in to challenge you and so we were talking about how the type of theater that we did as players and at barter in general and how we were people were going off and were we going to get that anymore and amelia talked about the the wealth of theater and the, there's such a huge amount of theater here such a huge arts town uh visual arts film television theater the majority of us are not doing it for a living out here and she talked about uh, she and a friend of hers, Christy, they went to college together. They had been in the works to start a theater company uh, to not only raise the bar on the quality of the work that's being done, but also to give people a place where you could actually do that for a living. And when she told me about it, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. And so December 2008 came around and uh, Packed up my stuff, left my girlfriend, called my family, told them I was coming out west, and packed up the car and my cats and drove the 1,500 miles out here. Uh, artistically, I feel like we're in a great place. We've got not only in this city, but uh, friends that we worked with back east that have been very you know, cool that we were able to find actors that meet our standards. Um, got high standards for theater. Much like with your food, if I'm gonna pay to eat it, it damn well better be worth it. I better like what I'm getting, you know what I mean? And so, uh, same thing. We wanted to come out here and, and, and raise that bar and serve the audience out here. And we have, we have done that very well. And I'm very proud to be a part of it. And I told him, Ellie, and told my dad, I'm like, I don't know why I trust her, uh, but I do. Uh, when I drove in, like when I hit the New Mexico border, I gasped because it really looked like I was driving on the bottom of the ocean and somebody sucked all the water out and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. And I kind of knew at that point that I was supposed to be here. And then I got here and it was like pretty brown skin heaven, you know? I mean, I left DC and I went to West Virginia and then I went to rural North Carolina and then I went to Southwest Virginia and a lot of places, like I was the only bit of color around. So it was nice to see people with brown skin again. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie about that. And then as the more I stayed here, I saw just the huge mix of people. New Mexican was Spaniards, and it was natives, and it was Mexicans, and it was Caucasians, and then even some black folks that, <laughs> that was kind of cool to see. Being out here, I've met some very cool people out here. It was, it was a bit strange to walk down the street and have an old white lady say good morning. And I, I remember telling my mom, I was like, it's, I gotta remember to, I can be nice to people. I don't have to have that armor on now. Do you know what I mean? I can walk by and I feel comfortable saying good morning and trusting that they are going to say good morning back, no matter what color they were, you know? Duke City Repertory Theater is the name of the theater. My role is I am the Associate Artistic Director, uh, Duke City. That is where we are. Repertory, uh, repertory theater is where you can come and you see several shows in a season. We're not just running one show. You come and see us one month and this will pick up. So don't worry. Right now we're still a little young. So this will be a thing where it gets to the point where, you know, you come see us on a Wednesday afternoon and you're seeing one show. You come back at eight o'clock that night, it's a different show and then so on and so forth. And those shows will alternate. But we run the gamut. We do everything. Uh, we've done musicals. We're breaking the theater for young audiences. Uh, straight plays, we have our winter classic every, uh, every January, February. Where we do a classic Greek or Shakespeare this year. We're doing Poe. Serve the audience. Uh, it's not about us. Uh, one of the hardest things to do is to come into a show and these people get 75 to 120 minutes to leave the world behind. They don't want to see the day you've had. More importantly than their money is that they have given us this chunk of their life and we want to make sure it's worth it. Uh, took me, I wasn't sure what was going on at first. Uh, took a little minute. You know, I was like, okay, okay. And then I really dug it. Um, the fact that I think it is going to take a minute for people to kind of get what's going on. I hate it when you know what's going to happen right away, when it's so formulaic that you're like, oh, I know what's happening already. Well, there's no reason to watch the rest of the movie. And this didn't do that. Uh, 
even the times, you know, from when I first read it at that read through, then reading it again and hearing different people read it, it, for, it does force you to think and it keeps you engaged in what's going on. There's some things that I felt about it that I'm, I'm a little nervous about saying because I don't want to give away anything of the film, but no clue. People were talking about it at the reading and I was like, what, wait, wait, what, that's what that was? And it made me want to go back and I had to go back and read it again. And I think that's going to be a great thing about this film is that it's not every time you watch it, there's another layer that you're going to discover about those characters that you're going like, oh, it's kind of like, I'm not comparing this to the room. <laughs> But there's a movie called The Room, and every time you watch it, and so like, you can find that in any film, but I probably have watched that film more than anything else. Every time you watch it, you're going to discover something new. Uh, getting a chance to work with some actors that I really admire, uh, that are also part of Duke City Repertory Theater, and some that are not. Yeah, Dead Billy really effed my head up for a minute, and that's what's going to be cool. There are things about it that I like that I don't think are gratuitous. Uh, I think the the way that things are used and the, the, the language that's used. And uh, I think it's, I'm a big fan of, I'm a big believer, and if it's in there, it's in there for a reason. And I, I think that's been done very well.